Phillips, and I got something exciting for all of you guys to participate in. I want you to repeat after me. It's a great day for Business Atlanta. It's a great day for Business Atlanta. That is what we do. My business is It's a Great Day for Business, Inc., and essentially we're business coaches, and we also help business owners and entrepreneurs establish themselves and to we provide the services that they need for them to thrive. What we do is make Atlanta a great place to work. And what we do is interview people, videotape that interview, we put it on YouTube, and you use that video to showcase your business. A lot of you guys are sitting in your seats saying, I haven't heard about this, this is incredible. You need to go to this booth right over here, where my finger is pointing, there's a little area. After we get done with our awesome presentation that we got going on here, we want you to come over there so we can do that, but that's essentially what we do. You can check out our website, it's a great day for business.com. And I'm Randall Phillips. Thank you for your time. Lovely. Lovely. We want to say a special thank you to It's a Great Day Atlanta with Randall because they are actually recording what's going on today here at the expo. You'll see bits and pieces of it or all of it, I don't know, but take a look at It's a Great Day Atlanta come first of next week or so. Right. I want to give it up for Alicia for actually, she's the one who made us get involved with this because she does, a, she's like, I'm going to call her the queen of networking. She was at a meeting and it was so incredible. One thing that's so awesome about this is that we're, we're melding North Fulton and South Fulton together, which is what we all need to do. My business primarily is Roswell, Alpharetta, Johns Creek, like that. But when I heard about this opportunity from Alicia, I said, you know, we need to get down there so that people know what we're doing because all of us in Atlanta need to increase our business. And it's not about South or North, it's about all of us getting together, helping Gary, helping Alicia, so that we can do what we need to make our businesses thrive. So that's all I have, yes. Give yourselves a hand for that, yes. So that's it for me. A great, great piece of work with video. You know, you have a flip camera, you have a regular camcorder, but then you capture all this video and then you don't do anything with it so no one sees it. Randall's going to share with you how you can actually use that to your advantage. Randall, tell them how you're using video to get you in the public. What, it's interesting. The I stumbled upon this when we, we've only been in, in Atlanta area a little bit over a year. In Maryland, what I noticed is on Facebook, there were so many people, there's an alarm going on, there were so many people who have a lot of friends. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, what is it about these people that are, they're drawn to? And it's usually there's certain qualities that they have, but one of the things that I noticed interspersed in their Facebook posts and whatnot, they would always have some kind of video. Right. And, their, and their friends would follow their videos, and then they would generate Google hits by having it on YouTube. Right. So as a business owner, so many times people talk about how great their website is, mm -hmm. and it really doesn't matter because just because you have a website doesn't mean that Google will see your website. Mm -hmm. Google looks for particular things. However, Google, this is, this is really powerful, Google owns YouTube. How many of y'all knew that? Mm -hmm. We talked about this on our show. Google paid $1.67 billion, $1 billion for YouTube because it's that serious. And because of that, Google is the number two search engine on the internet. And I need you to really understand that. Search engine. It's not just a fanciful thing. It's not just video. Google, YouTube is next. So what I said is, if we are as business owners, we have a website, if we have content on Google, if we, if we put a video together, it's going to automatically go to Google. Right. So it's really, it's a tremendous way to create leverage for yourself. And I'm not in the video business, and I want to tell people that. Right. A lot of people will say, well, can you make me a video? Um, no. <laughs> However, I, I venture to say this, if you have nothing, and I have a video that's an amateur video, I'm going to win. That's so, right. That's what I say. That's right. That's powerful. I like that. And he's right. If you don't have a visual presence, and I'm going to share with you, people want to see you and hear you. So if all you have is text, people actually, everyone likes to know what's going on in everyone's closet. And the best way to do that is to put that on video. One thing I'll share with you is simple. You don't need to get the big production and wait for everybody to have it all together before you get out there. Get with Randall, 
get your video done, get it up on the site, get in YouTube. And when he's talking about search engine optimization, you have to understand the value of keywords. With your video, you should be tagging it with certain names, not just yours, but other names. Names of the industry, names of the topic, names of what you do. If you do a jewelry video, you should put in jewelry, colors of the jewelry, styles of the necklace, your name, your company's name, who made the video. Also, you want to tap into what the association is that you're affiliated with. If you have a jewelry industry, put the name of the jewelry association. Like I would put marketing association of something. Tie it all in because they already have search engine optimization and you want it, right? Okay, let's talk to Elizabeth. Have any questions, please ask them now. You're getting it for free, okay? You're getting it for free. Let's touch base on networking. Ariel, how have you been using networking to your advantage in marketing to reach that profitable stage? Well, for myself, what, what I do is I, I put myself in front of groups, like I was saying earlier, and uh, at the end of, of, of the, you know, you, you meet somebody, let's say you meet, 50 to 100 people, you have 50 to 100 business cards, the most important thing is that you follow up the next day. Yes. Take one person out to lunch per month, uh, but really, you know, to follow up and, and ask, ask the, the, the people like, okay, is this person in my lane? Can I actually do some kind of joint venture or partnership? But I, the most important thing that I would, that I would uh, kind of drill into you is follow up the next day. Powerful. That's kind of my, my tip. Powerful. Let's just ask Mr. Randall, what are your tips? You had some really great information on networking. Tell us, what would you say about networking and how you're using it to your advantage in marketing? The key to networking is centers of influence. Ah. And it, it's powerful. It's one of my secrets that I, I teach, but I will give it away. <laughs> networking just to do it is very ineffective. In fact, I, when I first came to the Atlanta area, I would... I was a part of a host of different meetups. Meetup.com is huge. If you're not familiar with that, because every time I talk to people about it, they go, what is that? Meetup.com, write that down. You can find people who are interested in any subject that you could imagine. I'm interested in small business and helping business owners. So I, I looked for those people in my zip code in Meetup that were doing you know, what I was trying to, to do. But it's not effective to just go and not go, and then come again, maybe go again, and then go back two months later. <laughs> it's not effective, and, and so many people, I hear them in these meetings, and they say, I, I'm just not getting any customers from this. Well, you're not consistent. Right. The main thing in your business that you have to do, and this is key, people have to trust that you'll be there when they recommend you. Right. If they don't know, if let's say if I'm recommending one of my good buddies here is Keith Ivy in the front, if I'm recommending him, or, or Kurt or Sherry and I don't know if they'll get they'll go through and do the work I'm not gonna do it and it, it really it's not complicated and so many people it, it really boils down to our CEO of our company Louis Agudo who's over there he always talks about credibility and that's really the first step if you're not credible you can do as many internet things as you want but people when they say eh, you don't want people saying that you have to figure out Say to yourself, would you recommend you? If you can't say yes, you need to do some work. And just be honest. Like, I'm honest with myself every day. I go, how are people viewing what I'm doing? And then I'll ask people. I, I want you to be honest and tell me in this networking meeting, what do you see from me? And if they, they can't say, I need to do some work. And, and so really, it, it boils down to getting being consistent, Getting the, the main people who you need to focus attention on, because I, I hate to say it like this, but there's some people who are just a waste of your time as a business owner. That's right. So just the time saying. during the day, it's better to deal with the person who's the leader of whatever you're doing as opposed to the person who's trying to figure it out like you are. Mm -hmm. Leaders know things that can help you. People who are followers are, are trying to figure it out. So, you know, get with the people, like I said, with Facebook from the outset. If a person has... 5,000 Facebook friends, I mean, even if they're not a good person, they know something. <laughs> I mean, good gracious. And, and you know, I, I'll stop there. Somebody I, I, likes them, right? You know, at least yeah. 5,000 people that, like them. That'd be worth having <laughs> in, Yeah. And one more thing, and I don't want to hog up all the time, but 
you can't be cheap in business. You can't be cheap. Because here's something that amazes me. Somebody will say to me, I'm in the business of doing coaching or this and that, and I'm going to charge $150 an hour. We'll meet at a place that charges us 6 to $10, and they complain about paying that. So my mind goes... These people are in business, so if you can't pay six or ten dollars, you're not making any money. So why should I hire you? Right. It just don't make any sense. And, and a lot of times people miss those clues, but that's a clue. I wouldn't hire somebody like that because they're broke. Right. They can't help me if they can't if they don't have six or ten dollars. I mean, come on. So I'm gonna stop. <laughs> That's powerful. I'm getting I know, fired up. And I know we get really excited about this thing. Um, I, I, unfortunately, we are you know have time constraints because there are other panels that do need to come up that have valuable information. So I'm going to start to bring it home. However, they will be available to you. So please reach out to them. You can always reach out to me as well. But I do want to touch base on something. One of the ways that I utilize Meetup to expand my territory geographically was whenever I had to go and travel, I would search for a meetup group in the state city that I'm going to and make a connection there. And then when I arrived, I let them know I am from out of state. However, I'm looking for collaborative partnerships. And that's how I was able to expand my business geographically where I have connections all over the states as well as now into international territory. Because every time I went somewhere, whether you're hanging out, mm -hmm. as business people, we're always in business mode. Can we agree? That's right. Because if I go on vacation with my honey and I find out there's an opportunity to make some money, okay, let's be real.